legendary spotlight ebony moth so now we've gone through a good chunk of the like high impact uh, truly relevant legendaries at the point where they are relevant you know we have our starting four legendary characters that you, uh, the earlier you get them, the more impactful they are to your roster, that uh, some are useful throughout the entire game, some kind of lose uh, their their shine, but don't become useless, just less impactful. And then we got to our second stage, our mid-tier, or our mid-game legendaries, Black Bolt, Phoenix. Uh, those are the guys that immediately change kind of how you play the game in general, uh, and those are always going to be there. Now we go into end game legendaries. One of the reasons why I consider these end game legendaries is because you probably have to be in the end game to access them. Whether it be um, the effort it takes to get there, or your specific level or requirements in order to get the pieces, or because uh, the character or the team themselves don't show up too early for you. So that's where we get in Ebony Maw. Ebony Maw is a uh, the quintessential uh, endgame legendary. The earlier you get him, he doesn't actually impact you uh, a great deal, especially if you don't have the rest of his team, and it's very unlikely, unless you're spending a lot of money, that you will have his team early on. If you do, power to you, he's still great, most legendaries are, but for the average player in the game, if you're following through like the flow of the game, it's unlikely that you're going to have too much uh, of not only the required pieces for Ebony Maw, but the characters that work well with Ebony Maw to get the full value out of it. We'll go into detail more later. So first, let's take a quick look uh, at how you unlock Ebony Maw. Ebony Maw is unlocked with Black Bolt and four other Inhuman characters. He is the only legendary character right now that requires a specific character in addition to the tags that come along with them. Um, you cannot get Ebony Maw if you don't have Black Bolt. Period. Conversation over. You cannot use five Inhumans without him. That's it. I want to stress that because sometimes people don't pay attention to that detail or someone will say, how do you unlock Ebony Maw? They'll hear the Inhumans or Black Bolt and the Inhumans and just assume that they can get away with the guys they have, no. Ebony Maw is the first legendary to be hard locked behind another legendary. If you don't have Black Bolt, you don't have Ebony Maw. He is one of the first characters that requires you to have basically nine characters at five star in order to unlock him. The five Asgardians to unlock Black Bolt, and then the five uh, Inhumans, uh, or four additional Inhumans, Black Bolt obviously you get at five star, so it's not a big deal. Um, we can talk a little bit about the Inhumans team, but they're not really a team. They happen to work together. The core of the Inhumans team is, of course, just Black Bolt and Yo-Yo, and then whomever else you put in the team, they're just there. Ms. Marvel is Inhuman in name only, and I know, and she really doesn't contribute much to this team, but since she's super easy to get, you're probably going to end up having to use her. So. Speaking of that, we've already discussed it. Black Bolt, need to have him, is legendary, not easy to come by. So you're probably not going to get him super early. Keep that in mind as we talk about all the other uh, character farmability, because you don't want to farm and be ready, or be almost ready. You know, ready is a binary state. You're either ready or you're not. You can't be almost ready for uh, Ebony Maw. You can't have five-star any of these characters and not Black Bolt and consider it okay. You know, like, that kind of thing. There's no way to get Black Bolt in the last couple of weeks, you know, coming up to it, unless you got him in the Legendary. So, starting with the node farmable characters, Karnak and Ms. Marvel. Karnak is node farmable in Nexus 8-6. You have to be level 70, 71 in order to, uh, like, get to that node. So, already, that's one character that you could use that's not going to be available for you to have access in like the first you know couple months slash half a year of the game just in general uh, regardless of your spending it's just going to take a while to get there 
Uh, and Ms. Marvel is available in Mystic 2.6, a little bit more available, uh, a very good character, someone you might end up farming just because she works really well with some of the uh, hero brawlers you may come across. All in all, a good city character, so Ms. Marvel, easy to access, relatively early, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Then we have uh, Yo-Yo. <laughs> Yo-Yo is a premium orb exclusive, so you can't farm her. As a matter of fact, you could spend $10,000 opening premium orbs and not unlock her. It's possible. Is it likely? No, of course not. It's possible. So she's not farmable. The only way to get her is through spending money or opening premium orbs, and it's very unlikely. And since you have to get her to 5 star, it's incredibly unlikely that you're going to magically pull the correct amount that you need out of the premium orbs to get her there. So... For the sake of the argument, she's usable in the same way that you can technically unlock Magneto with Phoenix. You can. It's probably not the smart play. It's just a thing you can do. Yo-Yo is a great character. I would recommend getting her as you know, however you can and using her. But reliability as far as unlocking MD Maw. So we're going to ignore that. And the last two characters are Crystal and Quake. Both of them available in the early game in the arena store. None of them relevant in the early game. None of them stand on their own merit. They all are, at best, mediocre characters, Crystal included. Um, and they really don't shine until you have the full team anyway. So, and even then, Quake sucks. So, even though you can farm them early, you're taking away access to... All of the other characters we've done legendary reviews for in order to do so kind of a waste i would say i wouldn't start farming either crystal or quake until significantly later uh, maybe after you've unlocked all of the legendaries we've talked about or a good portion of them because you're just not going to get the impact uh, that's it so there as far as how easy to access he is his availability he's the hardest legendary to get and i mean that He's the only legendary that you have to get a full team, just five to get Black Bull, and then you have to get characters that don't fundamentally work very well with Black Bull, like Ms. Marvel, Quake, in order to unlock Maw. He's one of the hardest legendaries to get as far as when, where, how, and what he takes. Um, that said, we're going to look at his character kit, talk about breakpoints, and determine how worth it he might. Spoilers, it's kind of worth it. So, Ebony Maw, Legendary of the Black Order, right? Brings the entire team together. As with many other times when someone asks me, Hey, Tony, quick question. If I don't have Ebony Maw, who's the fifth on the Black Order? The answer is you don't have a Black Order team, so I can't answer that question. Do whatever you want, it's not going to matter. Sure, there are some situations you can uh, throw together, but don't worry about wasting resources on half-completed teams. Unless you know for a fact you're going to get Ebony Maw in his next pass, any character you put in the Black Order is temporary anyway, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. He really brings that entire team together. Um, in addition, just on his own, he's somewhere in the Shuri level of power uh, when it comes to utilizing him in raids and arena and war, in that he can uh, kind of maintain a pretty decent health pool on your side of the uh, the fight, but also have some really high impact effects based on what you're going up against. So let's start with his passive. Uh, you'll notice that my tier four investment in him is scarce. Uh, I have never seen a reason to do any more than this. You might, but we'll talk about that. Before I look at Tier 4s, ISO 8s, I have him as a Skirmisher. Um, healer is not necessary. He really only has one thing that heals, um, and it doesn't technically heal. It's a redistribute. So even on his turn... If you get the extra bonus from Healer, the, uh, you know, on turn heal lowest health ally, he doesn't quite have the health pool uh, to, to make it an amazing heal, but it's an okay option. Healer is never really a bad option. Um, as for Fortifier, unnecessary. 
he actually has pretty good survivability when we see his kit, so he doesn't need that extra little bit of, of, of you know, I guess, safe, you know, survivability. He doesn't need it. It doesn't come up for him. He'll be okay for two rounds or so. By that point, then maybe you might need to make some change. Um, Raider, he has one attack that physically hits somebody. Um, it, it can crit. So it does hit multiple times, so it's okay. But the damage output isn't great. So you're really not going to get too much reliability as far as placing a, uh, a you know vulnerable on one target with Raider. Not more so than Skirmisher anyway. Uh, and of course his ultimate doesn't actually do damage. It takes health, so it can't crit. Uh, and Striker, again, he doesn't do damage. So extra attacks or... It doesn't make sense. Um, so for him, it's literally just these two. I really like Skirmisher for a couple of reasons. The first is the focus at rank 5. The second is the... Um, well, obviously the health is on anybody. But the second is the on primary hit. Uh, apply vulnerable. If vulnerable, remove a buff. Since that's when you're using his basic the most frequently, uh, it's great to either place the vulnerable or take advantage of a vulnerable someone else put on. Preferably on someone with, like, a taunt. You know, you can kind of get through especially you'll see that comes up in mirror matches so that's it for iso 8s let's go straight into his tier 4 so we'll start with passive as always um envoy of thanos or cuck of thanos uh, on spawn gain two regeneration two death proof and immunity for two turns fill thanos's speed bar by 25 percent per black order ally clearly on the black order team that's awesome <laughs> um on ally turn if thanos doesn't have reality time or soul stone which he won't uh, grant him them, plus two regeneration, two death proof, and two immunity. As you can tell, if you know anything about the Black Order, Thanos basically gets whatever the character on the Black Order gives themselves. That's just what he does. Uh, this character can only do this once per match. That means if you res somebody, or if he reses, it doesn't apply again. On death of enemy controller, gain... Uh, I'm sorry, enemy hero controller, gain charge, apply immunity to all allies, barrier all allies for 20% of this character's max health. Uh, this is the... I'm countering uh, Phoenix <laughs> um, effect. If charge on enemy turn, apply ability block to all hero controller enemies, then lose charge. This cannot be dodged. This is kind of how he stops Phoenix, but remember there are plenty of other hero controllers. Scarlet Witch, Star-Lord. Um, this can make a difference. Hawkeye, sorry, thought of him in a sec. This doesn't seem like it's much, but you take huge advantage, especially in raids, whenever one of those characters get put down, because he will gain the charge, he'll bury, he's kind of like a little survivability on that, and it's for everybody, not just Black Order. Uh, then it's 20% resistance to him, and 20% resistance. If you tier for it, him and everyone gets only 10% additional resistance. This matters a lot when you're talking about, you know, percentages in mirror matches, for arena so if you're black order versus black order this can make be a difference maker just like anything else if you're in a fight where you just need them to hold and defense you probably want it i never used black order on defense um they really weren't very in my arena shard they weren't that oppressive unless they were 700k or actually even the 500k ones weren't hard to beat most people with 400k black orders could be 500k black order so it didn't really make a difference to me I know plenty of people do. To me, that 10% resistance is not what the Black Order team needs. And more importantly, he doesn't need it. So as a single character, it's irrelevant. Moving to Force Transfusion. Steal 3% health from all enemies and redistribute to all allies. This bypasses heal block. Repeat this attack four times. So it's 15% health steal. And not bad. Apply slow to all allies for two turns. Big deal. Fill speed bar for self and all allies, all of them, by 5% per Black Order and Thanos allies. So just with him, everybody gets a 5% turn meter. Every opponent loses uh, 5% of their turn meter right there. Uh, if it's him and Thanos, it's 10% or, you know, across the line. So it's, obviously it works amazing with the Black Order. It works pretty well with uh, anyone else. And again, this is the Tier 4 upgrade, uh, and that is one of the best features of how this works. So you really want to make sure if you want your Black Order to work, you have this. But even outside of it, it's still pretty good. Each attack redistributes a maximum of 25% of this character. So it's kind of like Minerva's ability. Um, 
but not. Basically, if someone has a dodge, it should still hit them at least once, you know? Uh, that's kind of why this is such a big deal. So, good ability, good attack, uh, helpful, very slow on cooldown, which is why he works really well in raids with just regular Thanos and not the full Black Order, so you can energy battery into him, make sure he can do this more often. It's not a great heal, but it's a decent heal. Um, it's not quite, you know, Minerva in Dark Dimension level, but it's it's okay. So, pretty good ability all around. Insidious Whisper, this is another one that, uh, on his team, it's not necessary. Uh, in raids, if you're not using Shuri, or if you don't have a reliable way to constantly put defense up, this is a good one. One thing I will say, though, this is another very slow cooldown, so you're not going to get super value out of it all the time. Uh, apply, defense up, the tier 4 gives it 2 turns, previously it's just 1 turn of defense up, he gets counter, all Black Order gets counter, uh, all enemies get offense down for 2 turns, and they all lose counter. That's it. Uh, I don't like this upgrade, but it feels like a necessary evil in order to get an extra 2 turns, especially when you're doing harder versions of U7 with this character. As for the Black Order, you know, all Black Order getting counter is already happening. It's it's fine. Um, not the most important, but again, if you don't have a reliable way of using defense up on your team, you're probably going to need this. Uh, and again, it works better with Thanos or someone feeding him energy so he can do it more reliably. Shuri does it better and quicker and faster, um, but that's just the defense up. You lose a lot of the other value. Uh, and then her basic is Needlestorm. Uh, he gets an extra bonus attack. So it goes to 80% piercing, and it attacks a total of four times, base plus the bonus. Um, it's okay, you know. Um, apply bleed if the primary target of the hero controller, apply bleed. This is kind of only amazing if you're specifically trying to take a hero controller out immediately. But, you know, if you have Skirmisher on him, then this attack is hitting harder. If you have, you know, Striker, it's kind of worth it. It's still just the damage, but there's a little bit of utility in here. I've never found a need to upgrade it. You might have. Um, it's up to you. Depends on how many tier 4s you have. Like I have enough tier 4s to do it, and I'm still not going to, so that should tell you everything uh, I believe on this ability. So, that's it as far as his kit's concerned. Uh, some of his individual uses, obviously Black Order, don't need to talk about it. Raids, he's a very useful survivability character. He's, I like to say, he's like the best second healer on your team. He gives you a lot of survivability as a support character. He gives you a ton of, of control and the ability to like push the button once, kind of like IW, where, uh oh, everyone's going to lose. Let me push this button, heal up. When we push this button, get counters and defense ups. So he's a good second healer. I don't think he's the best primary healer. Uh, is but now with ISO 8s, it might not make too much of a difference. One of the teams that people were using for uh, U7 in you know the beginning stages was like Black Bolt, Thanos, Ebony Maw, two other characters. Those two other characters could be, you know, Hela and Thor, or Ultron and IW, or Shuri, and so on. It, it didn't make a difference. Um, he has his incredibly good value. It it gets better but let's just say it like this if you got an ebony maw just an ebony maw in the first 30 days of the game ignoring black order ignoring everything else like some somehow it happened they gave everybody an ebony maw for free he's not necessarily gonna win you games on his own he's more of a unique and situationally good character that shines because his team is so useful the black order in everything that they use him in uh, and if you haven't checked my Black Order video out, by all means, go do so. I think that he's, like, one of the coolest and uh, highest impact optional legendaries. As of right now, there's very little things in this game that him specifically uh, needs to be present for. Like he, it, it, it doesn't matter. But then again, the Black Order is so good that why wouldn't you have him? Kind of like the Brotherhood is so good, uh, especially at war. Why wouldn't you have Magneto? That kind of thing. So, for rating, uh, I give him 
a slightly lower rating than I think a lot of people would. As an all-around character, just himself, he's not much better than a B+. The fact that he is another character with, like, percentage health steal pushes him, like, just under A, but... Ultimately, he's kind of a counter character. So the fact that his team is great and he needs to be on his team is great and it helps him. Um, and the fact that uh, he can be used in raids very specifically helps him. And the fact that he's good in arena on his own to counter Phoenix helps him. But the ability to defeat a good character doesn't necessarily make you inherently a good character. I think he is a good character, but I think that there are a ton of better characters. And as far as other legendaries are concerned, I think that there are legendaries that are far, far ahead of him, um, obviously. So, B+, plus, if you really feel bad about that, A- minus and call it a day. But I don't think he's as good as we were hyped to believe when he first came out. I don't think he's as good as maybe people imply, but I do think that he's a part of one of the best teams in the game, and therefore, and a necessary part of one of the best teams in the game, and he works really well on that team, so that's it. Uh, comment below and tell me how much you hate me for saying that. Anyway, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.